Hello, BookTube, and welcome to another weekly reading vlog. Well, uh, this week I've been rereading parts of Dune in preparation for my review, uh, and I've been working on my written review this week, uh, and I think I've got it more or less done, so I'll try and get the video review done sometime this week. I mean, as always, we'll see how it goes, but try and get the video review of Dune sometime this week. Uh, I finished uh, volume six of Buddha by Tezuka Osamu and uh, have returned it to my library. So I'm now on volume seven and I, I did a video review of volume six earlier this week. I'll link to it down below. I started diagramming sentences and I made a started video for that, which I'll link to in the description down below as well. Uh, and I've been making good progress on this book. Uh, how many chapters? I've, I've got uh, the first 10 chapters done, 82 pages, and I can show my work on this. So you, you'll have to forgive me. I know that this camera uh, is going to only display stuff in mirror images, but uh, you get the idea, maybe. This is chapter three here, a couple ones on the back. Chapter four here, again, a couple ones on the back. Uh, chapter five, a couple ones on the back. Uh, chapter six here, a couple sentences on the back. Chapter seven, a couple sentences on the back. Chapter eight, uh, chapter eight, I got a few wrong. Uh, so I, I've uh, made corrections in red pen when I've got that wrong. A couple ones on the back. Chapter nine, again, corrections are in red pen. And chapter 10, uh, which I just finished off this afternoon. So uh, I have been working through the diagramming sentences. And uh, yeah. I'll talk more about that book in another video. Uh, and then uh, Journey to the West, Volume 2, which I've uh, read through a couple chapters this week. So I, I'll just recap uh, what's happened in those chapters, because that's what these weekly reading vlogs are for. So when last I left it off last week, actually, sorry, let, let me take a step back. Uh, the, the Journey... To the West is about a, a Buddhist priest, a monkey, uh, a pig, uh, a dragon horse, and some sort of creature called Friar Sand, who are journeying to the West uh, to get the sacred scriptures from Buddha. Last I left it off last week, the monkey had uh, gone back to his monkey island because he'd been discharged by the priest. Uh, and there, uh, there was some sort of demon that was uh, causing them trouble. And the uh, pig had gone back to get the monkey. And so the monkey, uh, the pig actually made up the story about how the demon said that the monkey could never beat him. So the monkey came back to fight the demon. Uh, and uh, the monkey had uh, this arranged with the pig and Friar Sand. Uh, they were going to get the demon to come back and fight him. The, the demon was at the king's house in Elephantania. Um, now, the demon and the princess uh, had two sons, uh, and uh, Monkey had Pig and Friar Sand take these two sons and then bring them to Elephantania to taunt uh, the demon with. Um, and the sons are described as, I don't remember, being 10 or 11 years old. Uh, and they actually smash the sons. Uh, they, they're carrying the sons and they smash them to the ground. And it says that their blood went ever, everywhere and their bones were pulverized. And, and presumably they were killed instantly. Uh, which is a bit dark. Um, you, you know, sometimes in these older books... You get these like really dark things. I, I mean, I, if you've been watching this channel, you know I just did a review of the Odyssey in which I commented on that uh, disturbing aspect of it at length. Um, now, th th I think this is the first time in Journey to the West where there's been like some really dark stuff that the, the heroes have done. 
It's not really clear from the narrative uh, the nature of these sons, if they're like demons or half demons or normal boys. But at any rate, nobody really seems that upset about them being killed. Uh, the, the demon is very angry about it, like he's, he's angry somebody would have the effrontery. Is that the word? Uh, the, you know, the audacity to kill one of his, to kill his sons. But that doesn't seem to be torn up about it by any sort of parental love or anything like that. Uh, as with the mother as well. So it, I, I think you're meant to just let it go and just keep reading. Which I did. So the, the demon comes back uh, to fight the monkey. And they have this huge fight in which the finally the monkey hits him really hard with his golden cudgel. Uh, and the demon just disappears. And the monkey thinks, okay, he has to have gone somewhere. If, if I would have killed him, there would have been at least blood and pus somewhere around here. So it's something in the nature of the way that the demon just disappears makes the monkey think he must be a celestial being. He must be part of heaven. So he goes up to heaven. Uh, and of course, in, in volume one, of course, uh, was the whole story about how the monkey had had this huge battle against heaven. So heaven is really nervous when they see the monkey coming back. But the, the, the monkey uh, says, okay, uh, do a roll call. Make sure everyone is accounted for here. And they find out that one of the stars up in the heavens, one of the constellations, is missing. Uh, so then they find this, this constellation, the star. Sorry, I, I'm, I'm using the word star and constellation, aren't I? I, I think the... The star is part of a constellation. Um, they find the star is part of the constellation. Uh, and uh, he reveals that he was having an affair with one of the jade maidens who was serving in the, the, pal the heavenly palace. And so they arranged to both be reincarnated as, uh, as down on earth so that they could have their affair. Uh, or at least the Jade Maiden was reincarnated as a maiden. So, um, I mean, in the previous chapters, which, which I talked about last week, this princess had talked about how she was kidnapped by the demon and she just wanted to get home to her parents, uh, which I presume is all true because I, I, I'm assuming that when she got reincarnated as a princess, she lost all previous memories of, of her previous life as the Jade Maiden uh, from heaven. So she didn't realize, she thought she was getting kidnapped by this demon. But she didn't realize that this was actually her lover and that they had arranged to, to get reincarnated. So I thought, oh, okay, well, that's, that's an interesting plot twist. So uh, the, the monkey sorts it out. Uh, the... The princess, who is really the reincarnation of one of the jade maidens from heaven, goes back to her father. Uh, the star says he's sorry and goes back to being a constellation. Uh, and then they go back on their journey. And um, I, I've mentioned before that this book is quite episodic. And that seems to be the end of that episode. Uh, the next episode uh, starts in chapter uh, 31, I believe. Um, yeah, so they're going through, and they, they get to another mountain, which has lots of monsters in it. Uh, the, this, this, of course, this book is a little bit repetitive. They keep uh, running into mountains with lots of monsters in it. Let's see, was it chapter 31 where that... Yeah, I think chapter 31. Um... And they're going along and they get warned by a woodcutter about all the monsters. Uh, and it makes the, the monk and the pig really nervous. And then the woodcutter just sort of disappears. Uh, and the monkey later finds out that the woodcutter was the duty god, I guess one of the local deities. Because uh, the, the, the monkey goes to look for him and the, the monkey's got this sight uh, that the others don't have. So the monkey chews him out, but the, the, the duty god said... Well, okay, so, so, so I disguised myself as a woodcutter to give you the warning. But uh, the, the warning was meant, uh, it, it was meant well. I, I really was trying to warn you about these monsters. 
So the monkey thinks what to do, and the monkey thinks, okay, the best thing to do is send the pig to look for these monsters. Uh, and if the pig beats the monster, so much the better, then he'll get the credit. If the monsters beat the pig, then uh, I'll just have to come in and save him. I, th I think that's the logic. Um, so the monkey comes back and tricks... Uh, he pretends to be really upset and thinks that there's no way they can get a, uh, across the mountain. And then he, he says, well, the only way is if the pig goes and scouts first. Or no, he, he, presents, he presents the pig with a choice. He says, either you can take care of the master or you can go and scout the mountain. The pig doesn't feel like taking care of the master because that involves getting him food and everything. It sounds like a lot of work. So he volunteers to scout the mountain. Now the monkey follows him. The monkey can change form. So the monkey disguises himself as a small insect. Because the monkey knows that the pig is just going to go and sleep somewhere and then come back and lie and say he scouted it. So the pig goes and he sleeps under a tree and the monkey changes himself into a woodpecker and pecks uh, the pig awake and doesn't let him sleep. Eventually the pig decides to come back uh, and the pig... Uh, rehearses the speech he's going to give uh, about how he had been everywhere and searched everything. And the monkey disguised as a small insect uh, on the pig's, behind the pig's ear, hears the whole speech. So when, when the pig comes back and he gives the whole speech, uh, the, monkey, the monkey actually finishes the speech for him and the monkey tells him that he actually saw that the, he was actually following the pig the whole time and he, he knew all of it. And he wants to uh, give the pig a beating with his golden cudgel as a punishment, but the pig knows that will kill him. So the, the monk intervenes and, and uh, says, okay, there's, there's no beating, but the pig has to go out again. So the pig goes out again and the pig is so paranoid that the monkey is following him now. Uh, and every time he sees a tiger or he sees a, a log in his path, the pig thinks it's a monkey in disguise, uh, but it's actually not. Um, and then we get to the uh, demons in the mountain. There are two of them. There's Golden Horn and Silver Horn, uh, who are in, in a cave, and they're the rulers of this mountain. And they uh, find out that the monk is crossing the mountain somehow. Uh, and they somehow know that this monk is the reincarnation of the golden cicada, uh, who's been through a, a path of re being reincarnated ten times to achieve enlightenment. So, uh, or, it's, sorry, not to achieve enlightenment. Uh, it's reincarnated ten times to, to accumulate good works or something. So they, they, they know that his flesh is really pure, and uh, apparently if they eat it, it will bring them enlightenment or cause them, give them special powers. Um, this, this is something that was hinted at in previous chapters. And anybody who eats the monk, the, the reincarnation of the golden cicada, gets these special powers. Uh, so they make this plan to capture him. And they, they know that he's being escorted by the monkey and the pig and the horse and, and Friar Sand. Uh, and so they go out with 50 demons, and they they happen upon the pig. And uh, the pig at first tries to deny who he is, but they can see the snout. He tries to hide the snout in, in his uh, clothes, but uh, they eventually see it. So the pig gets out his, his rake, which is his weapon, and he, he fights uh, the demons, but then he uh, starts to get tired or lose, and he runs. And he trips and he tries to get up again, but one of the demons trips him again and he gets captured and brought back. And so they, they've got him brought back and the pig says, okay, well, fine, you caught me, but you don't want me. I, I'm no good to you. It, it's, it's my master that you want. And what do they say? They, they say, well, uh, yep. Yeah. So, sorry, let, let me read from this part. <clears throat> Your majesty, said pig, taking his chance. I'm just a useless monk, so let me go. I'm scarcely human. No, don't let him go, brother, said the younger monster. He may be no use himself, but he's with the Tang priests. Pig's his name. We can soak him in the drinking water pool at back till his bristles come out, salt him and dry him to eat with our wine some rain day. Damn it, said Pig. 
I would have to run into a devil who's a sork, who, who's, sorry. I would have to run into a devil who's salt pork paddler. Uh, and then the junior demons carried Pig inside and threw him into the pool. Uh, yeah, and that's as far as I've got for now. So the, the silver horn and golden horn want to catch the priest, and they've got the pig uh, captured and, and bringing him into the pool to um, eat him later. Okay, uh, I will finish up here, and uh, see you next week.